go guys so a lot of you guys are asking me do i have to be good at math to become an architect and i have answered this multiple times in many occasions no you don't have to be good at math to become an architect don't believe me i'm like a living testament to why this is true believe it or not i failed maths a lot i failed maths in preschool i failed maths in elementary and then i failed maths during college so yeah i'm not exactly the bee's knees when it comes to maths i probably the squid's knees you know because squids have suction thingies on their tentacles and i i suck at math so first year first semester i was doing pretty good you know i was the typical freshman with a ton of items on hand i literally felt like i was going camping every day but except of sleeping in a tent i slept under my drafting table at 3 a.m and instead of climbing mountains i climbed my school's endless stairs you know what the worst part about our school was it was the stairs combined with the schedule. So I had this schedule where one of my classes were at the 7th floor of the architecture building. And then the next one was at the nursing building. And then after that class, I have to go back again at the architecture building 7th floor. And that time, we didn't have lockers. So we had to carry around all our items. I kind of felt like Frodo from Lord of the Rings. But unlike Frodo who only had to climb Mount Doom once, I had to climb this stupid stairs every day. I can't carry it for you, but I can carry you! It was like the guy who made our schedules was training us for the Olympics. By the end of the first semester, the diameter of my legs grew twice its normal size. I looked like a hybrid of Hulk and Spider-Man, I had a skinny torso, and my legs were freaking gigantic. So first year, first semester ends, and I have no failing grades. Although trigonometry was a very close call, by this time I had basically adapted to the college way of life. I now had long hair and my clothes were black. My whole look was super cringy in retrospect. Except for the long hair, you know. I love the long hair. So second year, second semester rolls around and this is where I hit rock bottom. I failed like 3 subjects during my first year, second semester and I wasn't able to get physics during summer so I got delayed. No one freaking told me we had to do summer. This is the semester when I told my parents about my failing grades. My mom got all mad and started to lecture me. She even got the sandok. You know, things are getting serious when your mom gets the sandok. You see guys, mothers have 5 levels of anger. There's level 1 where she just does this sound. So this is what happens when you spill a bit of rice on the dinner table. Then there's level 2 where she says with a disappointed tone and I swear if real life had subtitles, under my mom there would be a caption saying disappointedly looks at you with extreme disappointedness. You will usually experience level 2 when you break something of historical family significance like your great great grandfather's urn. So sorry grandpappy. Moving on to level 3. Level 3 is when she gets something to hit you with like a sandok or a flip flop. So this usually happens when you failed a couple of subjects during college. So yeah, this is the level I was at. Okay, so above level 3 is the level of anger only achievable by being a smarty pants. And by this I mean trying to escape level 3 anger with reason and logic. Or when you tell your mom to calm down, so yeah, that is level 4. Level 4 is when she throws stuff at you with laser accuracy. So you know, if she wanted to hit you, she will hit you. She could hit you with a flip flop across a football field if she wanted to. There is no escape. And then there's level 5 anger. This is the level you don't wanna cross. It is when she just cries. Straight up cries. I have lived in this world for a pretty long time and I've only experienced this a couple of times and let me tell you guys, this isn't a level you would want to reach. Anyways, let's get back to the main story. So I told my parents about my failing grades and my dad was all just calm. You know, normal dad reaction. Oh, that's not good, son. You know what they say quitters always quit i couldn't really remember the specifics of how they lectured me but i imagine that's what my dad would have said and on the other side of that there was my mom my mom was straight up level 3 angry bordering on level 4 i think in her anger she even tried the jedi mind trick on me she told me to shift to another course like nursing or it and let me tell you guys as soon as she said that 
I knew I wanted to stay in architecture school and become the greatest architect that has ever lived in the history of the universe. Ever. Just kidding, I, I just wanted to graduate architecture school. It's like she tapped into my rebellious self. I was like, oh, so they want me to not be an architect. I'ma do the exact opposite of that and be an architect. That'll show them. <laughs> Anyways, that's the story of how I got delayed. So just like every movie, for every conflict, there's a resolution where the protagonist climbs up the mountains to reach the climax and emerge victorious against the adversity and evils of math.